great, man. Uh, that's like... really awesome. So, well, guys, guys, Brent Abel here. That dude over there, and it looks like the restaurant. I guess it's the bar, the Wetson Lawn Tennis Club. Uh, Jeff Jacklich. Uh, and we are gold ball hunting. And what we what do we got for you today? Well, we got another episode of our podcast. This is actually episode 190. We're, yes. we, we are past the halfway point of that 365. Again, I can't remember if 2020 is a leap year. It might be 366. That we, Let's just call it 366. But, yeah, what the heck. But we're, uh, but we're halfway through that. Uh, I, think, I think we're on the downhill side now of that freight train kind of barreling down the hill uh, to get to 366. Anyway, Jeff, listen, we are, we are publishing every day. And uh, we are trying to help three basic types of tennis players. Number one, tournament players, right? Those guys who are playing local, okay. regional, national. Maybe they're traveling over to, uh, you know, Stad. I have every, I've always Stad. Stad is it like or the bastard Sweden? No, it's Stad. And uh, so, <laughs> or league stuff. You guys are playing league tennis, or those the uh, the Wednesday night brew crew. Uh, whether it's singles or doubles, and uh, you just, you know, you're competitive, man. You want to win. You want to win. You want to get that result. You yeah. want to be the man. You want to be the woman. Well, we're here to help you do that, to realize your dreams of uh, of getting that result you want. So before we get into today's topic, which is, you know, something we've talked about frequently, and we believe a lot in Jeff, but... I've got a little story about it that I don't think I've related. And I'm sure it will bring to mind a story for you as well, a personal story. But, cool. but guys, before we get into today's topic, a quick reminder. If you want to jump on a free private coaching call, 10 minutes with me and Jeff, you can do so. Uh, 10 minutes may not sound like a lot of time, but if you bring the number one thing in your game right now that you feel is holding you back from getting that result you want then you know what? Get on this call and uh, Jeff and I will help put you on the path to getting the result that you want, whether it's singles or doubles. Go on over to goldballhunting.com, drop in a first name and email address, and you'll get access to our online calendar scheduler where you get to cherry pick a date and time that works ideally into your busy schedule. Unless you're you're retired, then, you know, then boy, it's wide open. Wide open. Yeah. Yeah. So, look, uh, we talk a lot, Jeff, about kind of kind of developing a process, right, uh, in terms of, of, well, not only developing a process for improving your game, but also trusting in the process of not looking for the quick fix, not looking for the tip, not looking for all the little... All the little claims, all the little hypey claims that we see on the internet of, <laughs> oh, should we not get into it? <clears throat> Careful. Okay. okay so... <laughs> I, it's so tempting to just tee you up and totally. let you go off of that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But I, I remember working with Mr. Stowe and it was clear from day one that he had and he actually wrote a book, you know, the Tom Stowe Tennis Teaching Method. He had his own system for how to teach the right. game. And and it was obvious for me that that this was this was the guy that I needed. I needed a system, I needed a process because when I went to see him there 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 was just no rhyme or reason to any part of, you know, or I should say that to the different parts of my game. So so I get this system and I'm with him for a few months and I'm giving myself up to the system, I'm in it, I'm in the process. And yet there came a point where I started looking for shortcuts within the system. Right. <laughs> so um, I tried that for a while, you know, and, and it didn't work. And I was going to say, how'd that go? <laughs> it didn't work. Well, I kept going back and he'd look at me going, he'd be going, what have you been doing all week? That's not what we worked on last week. <laughs> And I thought, God, you can notice it. it's that obvious, huh? Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe you've got your own personal story or maybe in terms of teaching and coaching, you know, how you see students go out there and you've you've got the system. It's clear as bell, as, as a bell, right? It's just crystal clear. 
<clears throat> right. But your students are coming back and they're trying to goof around with the system or the process. They're trying to shortcut it. Right. What do you do? <clears throat> yeah, that, that's a toughie, you know, and I'd say for me, the notice is not, is not, I mean, even though I think, I think the term shortcut it is, that's an interesting challenge in, in what we do, you know, find, trying to shortcut it um, in a, especially when you're talking about the use of a, a set of ingredients and the order in which they need to be used. Um, it really comes down to paring it down to exactly what are they and the order in which they need to be used. And then athletically, how do you present them? Because athletically, um, Rafa, Fed, and, and Djokovic all have different, uh, let's say, personality styles of how they strike the ball. They're all doing the exact same thing thing in terms of the ingredients and the order in which they're putting them together. They're all doing the exact same thing. Um, it's just athletically expressed differently. So, so when I, a big, a big, you know, like red flag is a student goes and they've been working on it and they come back and then they've, they've added something is normally the challenge. It's not that they've taken something away. Normally it's they're, 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 their hack to the system is I'm going to add a little, I, I rolled my grip a little bit more, Jeff, and I notice I'm putting more topspin on the ball and, and, but you know, I'm really having trouble with the ball, you know, landing a foot below the net below the tape you know? <laughs> or whatever it might be, you know? And yeah. so it's like, well, why'd you do that? What, what was the, well, you know, I was reading this article and, you know, topspin, modern forehand, whatever it might be. <clears throat> and they go off on a tangent. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, it's just, it's silly to think that, um, that you, you have to have a modern forehand to compete at the highest level and, uh, and that you need that somehow to make, or your backhand, whatever extreme backhand grip or whatever it might be to compete and compete well and to actually be in the hunt. Hey, look, and, you, and we know we we know for a fact that that's just not true. <laughs> well, well, that's right. And you just said something I hadn't thought about, but uh, it's it, it's it's the way that shortcuts happen. Is you've you've been working with someone on their game, or in my case, I'm working on my own game, and the shortcut uh, shortcut the shortcut ends up being an add-on. An add-on, right? And now you're just you're just you're just weighing down the fundamentals. <clears throat> you're weighing down the process, and once you start adding on, and, and the whole thing with you know this the big term that kind of drives me nuts these days is the whole learning thing about well let's hack the system, right? Well, hacking the system rarely rarely has any success if you take away a fundamental. I think that's pretty right. obvious. So everyone starts right. going, well, I'm going to hack it by, and, and, and hacking really means what can I do to learn this faster? Right. It has nothing to do with, with learning it properly. Um, you know, the other thing that, that I got from Mr. Stowe was, I remember one day having a discussion, the guys, the group I was in and him, and, and we were talking about the Stowe method, the system process he had, and um, he said, you, 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 could, you could line up 10 players in a row. And, and I could tell you whether or not they were, you know, under, under the Stowe influence. Right. Even though they all look completely different as players. Right. And the way he explained it was, he said, look, there are fundamentals in the game. And he says, I want each of you guys to initially learn these fundamentals. And once you do, then I want you to take your own personality and I want you right. to lay it down on top of those fundamentals. And right. I just, I mean, the light bulb just went off for me where I was, and now I had permission. You mean I could serve volley with your fundamentals all day long? Yes, Mr. Abel, you can do that. You got permission to do that. I could take a second serve and chip and charge all day long. You, you sure could. Whereas Kinger, might say, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna thump that backhand return and see what you cough up, and then I might right. come in. 
right? And right. Stowe would go, Doug, absolutely. You know, right. where Fanky might do something different, Hubble might do something different. But I thought that was really interesting that that the untrained eye would look at 10 different players and go, oh, those guys are all from different different right. teaching pros. Where <clears throat> Mr. Stowe right. would go, well, no, seven of them um, are under the influence right. of the Stowe method. So, right. I don't want right. I don't want people to think that we're trying to teach robots that we're just trying to homogenize it in such a way that everybody looks the same. But there are fundamentals right. that you got to have, and 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 you can't really shortcut it. You can't shortcut right. getting those fundamentals, and uh, and once right. you got them, then I mean, my personality is 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 different now than what it was when I was younger. I mean, I was just a I was an NBA rebounding monster. <laughs> I was crashing the boards. I mean, every ball looked like an approach shot opportunity. Right. <laughs> now, not so much. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to stay in the point a little bit longer now. But yeah. And, and I guess that's just, and I wouldn't say it's difference in personality, but it's difference in kind of tennis personality. Well, yeah. I mean, how do you, you know, how do you express? How do you express your natural instincts athletically within the framework of being able to hit the ball fundamentally sound? Yeah. Right. And so, you, boy, it, it pinged a bunch of bunch of, you know, uh, memories for me. So one in, in when you talk about the robot, you know, we, we're not looking at everybody hitting the ball, you know, looking the same. And that conjured up uh, back in the day in Palo Alto, uh, famous uh, junior coach Nick Carter. And you could actually go out and see out in the junior tournaments who was taking from Nick Carter. That's right. Yes. No, they, they, those forehands all look identical. Well, and, and the slice right? backhand didn't look too different you know, either. And, 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 I'm not, and I'm not saying that disparagingly whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot of great players. But that's, there's a difference there in that coaching style. You know, um, I mean, definitely, you go, oh, that's a Nick Carter forehand. That's a Nick Carter forehand. That's a Nick Carter forehand. Because they literally looked all the same. Um. On the other side of the coin, my own personal journey of of learning, um, you know, my my junior career, I was uh, coached by Giuseppe Camarado, uh, who was at Silverado in Napa, and obviously, and, and Tom Stowe was at Silverado, and so Giuseppe took over for Tom. So Giuseppe spent a few years with Tom before he passed as well. So I'm a I'm a Stowe disciple once removed, um, and you know Giuseppe's greatest frustration with me was was taking my, per I wanted to put my personality before the cart, right? And so good, obviously, good. you know, very expressive. You, you, you know the way I play, Brent, and I'm creative, and I see things differently than players do about options and what I can do with the ball and blah, 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 which isn't always a good thing. Um, <laughs> however, it was, he had to pare all that down. Like, God, can you put that in a mayonnaise jar and stick it on the shelf right now, you know, on, on the porch of Funkin' Wagnall? And let that sit there for a while. And can we just do this? Jeff, can you just turn? Can, you know, can you just, you know? And then, of course, one of, one of his favorite phrases is, okay, so you know how to do it. You know what to do. You know how to do it. So why don't you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I keep going over to the porch and opening up the mayonnaise jar. Yeah, you know, and so, um, but eventually I got it. Yeah. You know, it took years, but eventually I got it. And then um, Sherm Stever um, was the one that helped me introduce my personality um, and layered that on top of the fundamentals. So the fundamental didn't change. It was now, as you explained, you know, Tom asking, you know, telling you guys, express yourself now. But, but we're going to put that expression layered on top. The, the ground floor is the fundamental, and we're going to layer your personality and what instincts you have with the toolbox you have to construct points and to win matches. Yeah. Um, and so that, that right, that's, so that's my basic journey in that. And when I added my personality to that fundamental, that's when I, I really – you know, started, you know, making leaps and bounds in North Cal tennis in the, in the men's opens, um, you know, from, from no ranking struggling, 
first and second round in the men's opens to, um, I think, uh, number 17 in NorCal, right? From the, like, basically no ranking to number 17. And at yeah. that time, as you know, that was a oh, tough pool man. of guys. That was, those, were, those were the golden <laughs> years where, man, For that, sure. was, that was some great tennis. Uh, well, I want to clarify one thing about when we're talking about laying your personality down down on top of the fundamentals. I mean, it really comprises the 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 term personality really comprises two things. Really, what's your kind of what's your threshold for risk and reward? You know, right. are you kind of a risk taker? Um, and if you are, you better make sure that you've got the athletic ability to be able to. Um, put yourself in a position on the court where you're challenging that opponent to, all right, dude, right. you got 12 inches over here. You got 12 inches over here. If you want to top that lob 12 inches over there, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I, yeah. I, I, I assume that you're going to hit a few of those, but, but as Mr. Stowe used to always say, if you keep putting yourself up there, even the great ones become human, meaning right. that they, that they start to, that they start to miss. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, McEnroe will be the first to admit that, you know, he got past more than anybody Yeah, because he was, he was at the net more than anybody, Yeah, but he, you know, he, his, obviously his style of just keep coming at you, keep coming at you. It also reminds me of a match uh, in 96 playing for the, uh, the 35 team uh, for NorCal. Uh, and it was down in, uh, you know, down in Arizona, the, the, the team intersection, uh, Whatever, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. And, um, and so playing on that team, and we played, uh, I'm trying to think, like third round or something like that, we played uh, Puerto Rico. And so their their top three guys was, uh, number one was Francisco Gonzalez. Number, <laughs> number two was Ernie Fernandez. And number three was Pedro Gonzalez. Oh, wow. All, you know, obviously Francisco was, what, top 10 or at least top 15 in the world. Ernie Fernandez was pretty close behind and Pedro Gonzalez was definitely a top 100 guy. And so, uh, you know, I played, I played number three that day and played Pedro and we went at it for three sets and I just kept coming at him. I played a lot of, you know, we just did an episode or two ago about being in no man's land and I can't even tell you how many balls I played out of the dirt and just, I just kept coming. I just kept coming. And then finally third set, um, he broke down. And so I ended up winning the match in three nice. and that, but that's nice. that, you know, but, but that, it just reminded me of that, that, you know, staying with what you do and not panicking because you're getting passed a few times. Yeah. Well, and, you know? and, and isn't that the key? I mean, I think that, and we see it so much in juniors right now that, you know, the coaches to their credit are encouraging their kids to maybe not serve in volley, but at least serve and look for a short ball and get in or get a weak second serve and get in. But unfortunately, what happens is the first time they get passed, it's like right. a shot to the gut. And yeah, deer in the head, deer in the headlights. And they're like, "Well, I can't do that. This 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 feels too bad to get passed." Right. And uh, and and so the next step for the coach is to convince that kid that that's part of the deal. How do you want to lose the point? I mean, if you're going to sit back and grind seventeen groundies and lose a point. You want to do it that way? Because the chances are you're going to lose more of those than if you get passed four or five times and Oh, and my God. Su suicide hotline for me. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, listen, guys. Hope you got something out of today's uh, episode uh, of the Gold Ball Hunting Podcast. Uh, obviously, we, Jeff and I love to read and respond to your comments if you're over at YouTube. If you want to send us an email, you may do that as well. Let us know at goldballhunting.com. Uh, and please, uh, if you're on an a audio platform, rate us, review. Really, really helps us get the message out to more tennis players out there, and we would be greatly um, appreciative of that. Jeffrey, what do we want the fine folks to do right now, this minute, right here, right now? Like us, share us, please subscribe. Let us know what you think down below. Bingo. Bingo. Guys and gals, get out there today. Get out there today, wherever you are. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Jeff, we'll do this again tomorrow. Can't wait. <laughs>